I found out that you can catch giant rainbows and browns in the middle of lakes and gra on grasshopper patterns no in, the in the middle of the day. Of lakes. Mm -hmm. That's weird. And that's a new thing for me. I've always caught them along shorelines, yeah. but I so had what, a, they're just something just floating, get blown, get blown. I up had there. fish blowing up yeah. on big grasshoppers in the middle of of uh, Georgetown Lake near Phillipsburg, Montana. Wow. Fish up to 28 inches. And again, it was like sharks eating penguins. They were leaving spray trails of like three feet. Really? Yeah, it was Jeez. awesome. That was my good friend Gene Shropshire sharing a story and a great tip for your next Stillwater adventure. This is episode 163 of the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash Facebook and join our community and ask a question for the next guest. Gene Shropshire, my good friend and one of my biggest mentors, is here to share uh, some tips on dry fly fishing and some stories about uh, my old man. We hear how he uh, became a senior trout bum uh, in recent uh, uh, days here, what, what the last excursion to Montana was like, and why Southern Oregon is his go-to spot for trophy trout. Before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsors. SoFly Gear, headed up by 17-year-old James Carlin of the U.S. Youth Fly Fishing Team, has a buttery, soft, quick-drying apparel line that I've been loving. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash SoFly and support James and the podcast today. The Fly Fishing and Tying Journal has an exceptional fall edition that's out right now. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash FTJ to support the great work Craig and the gang have created just for you. Again, that's wetflyswing.com slash FTJ and also wetflyswing.com slash S-O-F-L-Y. So without further ado, here is Gene Shropshire. This is, uh, this is Dave from uh, the Wet Fly Swing podcast, and today I'm happy to introduce uh, Gene Shropshire, uh, an old friend. Uh, and somebody I've known all my life. There's only been one other person I've interviewed on this podcast that um, I didn't know or that I knew more than you, longer than you, is my dad. So yeah, that's what's amazing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, and we'll probably talk about my dad somewhere along the way. But um, so, Gene, thanks for thanks for doing this. You're welcome. Very good to see you again, yeah. Dave. It's been too long. I know. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. been. I'm not sure how long it's been, but this is a couple uh, of years with your family and totally. those things involved. God. Yeah. It's been, I know, it's, that's a crazy thing. Time flies. And the cool thing is, man, I mean, I haven't seen you a couple of years, but you're looking good. You're looking like you got the boat. You're working on the boat. Well, you're, you guys got to have his priorities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, I guess I was kind of picturing, you know, coming over here and being like, oh, Gene, you know, gave up fishing. He's, you know, kind of like, that's not going to happen. Absolutely not. My wife has been giving me a hard time lately because I uh, christened myself the old timers trout bum. Yeah, uh, I essentially have not worked since May of this spring. I've been That's fishing it. almost continually. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think I've missed a week. Yeah. A week has gone by where I haven't wet a line somewhere. So it's been uh, a great pleasure to finally be at that stage of my life to be yeah. able to free up. So you're so you're retired now. I am semi-retired. Yeah. I'm still taking jobs as a contractor as I see fit. Yeah, if you will. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, my, my goals are to now to, is to pursue the music that I do and fly fishing in particular. That's right. And we passed uh, by the, uh, a Gibson guitar in there, which. Yeah, I've got several Gibsons yeah. and amongst other things. And I've been pursuing jazz since I was been in my late forties, although I've been playing since I was in my, uh, early twenties. Yeah. That's right. And that's the cool thing is that I forgot. I don't forget. You just reminded me, but you basically taught me. I mean, I'm now a professional guitar player, but I've got a guitar and actually my daughter now has a little guitar. Oh, how nice. And really that comes back to you yeah. because you taught me some of the basics and I can mm -hmm. do enough that I can play a little bit of Oh, uh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. You know, I mean, sharing that, the wealth is what it's all about. Exactly. But I'm nowhere near the guitar player. I mean, you're essentially, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, you're a professional guitar player. I mean, mm -hmm. when you look back at your life, when you think fly fishing, guitar, um, I mean, which one, I mean, took more work to get to the level, do you think? Well, for me, fly fishing came really naturally. 
Um, I knew from a very early age, my, my first fly fishing, my first fishing excursion was when I was five years old. And somewhere in the family archives, we have films of my first fish, yeah. which was caught uh, in a lake in Princeton, uh, on Princeton University's um, uh, grounds. Huh. And it was a little crappie, you yeah. know. And right from the very beginning, I knew this was for me. Yeah. And so I, while other people were in grade school, perhaps like, you know, studying what Mickey Mantle did or Wilt Chamberlain did, you know, I was reading books that had to do with fly fishing. No kidding. And fishing in general, yeah. So you, so all the way back so, to five? All the way back to five years old was my first fishing excursion. Yeah. Um, by the age of seven, I insisted on my dad teaching me to fly fish since he was a, avid fly fisherman he was and yes he was yeah and um he he taught me a lot um although uh <laughs> there was a lot of ac exasperating times for him up yeah. until the time i was about 10 or 12 because yeah. i was constantly in a tree or had some kind of a what, what was your what was your dad's problem. name it was also gene it was yeah. your gene mm -hmm. so you're gene jr no he didn't no. have a middle name my middle initials are uh robert and he did not have a middle name so. oh gotcha so he wanted to avoid the junior thing. He oh, didn't okay. want everybody calling me junior. There you go. But but, so, you, but there's another Gene Shropshire. Your dad was. Uh, yeah, there yeah. is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There was. There was. Yeah, yeah. There was. So anyhow, it came natural to me. Getting back to that question about you know, and, and guitar, I really didn't pursue. I started actually playing guitar was I said when I was seven years old. But excuse me, when I was nine. But unfortunately, my parents couldn't afford a higher quality guitar and I got my fingers got tiresome and my brain got tiresome from fighting inexpensive guitars. I only took lessons for about a year and then I let it go. Yeah. I picked it back up again when I was 19. Uh -huh. um, but guitar has been has been a real struggle for me because I don't yeah. really feel like I'm that talented and it's it's been a labor of love no doubt. Yeah. But it's been very hard for me, you know, and I I stumbled through it. Yeah. Um, and being self-taught was, you know, definitely not a good idea. It would have yeah. been, it would have been to my advantage to, Did to you. seek out a good teacher. Yeah. Did you yeah. ever take lessons? Along? I have a teacher yeah. um, who's self-professed not a good teacher, but a yeah. very good guitarist. Gotcha. Um, and he's the guy that taught me much of the theory that I needed to learn and other things. But the fishing end of it was natural for me. It was. And it always has been. Um, not only did I have a super great love for it, but it just came really easily to me. Casting was easily, uh, you know, I was a very good caster. I won several fly fishing uh, casting um, uh, awards, you know, before I was 15 years old. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so just local, yeah. you know, just local casting contests at their, Damn. at their, you know, their uh, grassroots level. Sure. Um, and they were mostly, you know, maybe 15, 20 contestants. But, yeah. you know, as that went on, huh. and then I became involved in Trout Unlimited, the Ernie Schweeper chapter. Oh, yeah. When I was, uh, I'm pretty sure I was 18 or 19 then. Right. I was still in high school, and I know. Where, where was this? What, you're in New it Jersey? was in New Jersey, New still Jersey. there. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, but never a week went by in my early life that I wasn't out on the water fishing for bass or trout. Or, there you go. Anything I could get my hands on. So this has been a lifelong, a lifelong. It career. has been, and I've never, you know, let other things get in the way. Yeah. To and totally it, encompass, totally. you know, my life away from fly fishing. Even with, from fishing uh, generally. Even yeah. when you think about, you know, uh, the girls, booze, all that stuff, you still. I was chastised on a regular basis, you know, during high school, early, you know, junior high school and high school for, you know. What do you do with all those trout you catch? Yeah. You know, well, I, I put them back in the water, you know, alive, and yeah. no one could could really understand. So you were doing that. The reasoning you, behind you were that. Catch and release before it was. Yeah, um, there was a couple of guys that I befriended. Uh, Wayne Campbell was was one of them at through Trout Unlimited. There was another gentleman whose name was Joe Armenti. These guys were really good fly fishermen back then, and they introduced me. They were older than me. And they introduced me to a lot of techniques that I didn't know, you know, in my teenage years. Wow. Um, I also worked in um, several sporting goods stores where uh -huh. I, I met more people, too. Gotcha. And so uh, we, you know, Joe and I 
we didn't fish a lot together because of different for different reasons all of them positive but um we routinely go to places like the Bushkill River in Pennsylvania, which were mm -hmm. stocked, and between the two of us, hook 125 trout yeah. in a day. So Pennsylvania, that's right. Because you're, I mean, so you people knew. thought we were lying, and people thought we yeah. were, you know, we were killing all these fish. We would rarely kill any. Yeah. Anyhow, back to the, you know, being chastised for, huh. you know, when other guys were chasing girls around up that I didn't have my share of that. Oh, but, yeah. Um, but really... You know, at the forefront always was fly fishing, uh -huh. and it's it, it always has been. Yeah, that's um, it. Okay. So okay. it's been a lifelong love, and, and there's never been a struggle with that. No, I've never had done. problems learning it. Um, so, so you're back east, so basically mm -hmm. teenage years. So when did you make, because I think about when we first met, it's been a number of years now, long, but, mm -hmm. but when did you make the move out west from... 1977. Oh, yeah, 77. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so two years after I was born, you... Uh, uh, yeah. 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 And I met your dad shortly thereafter oh, yeah. when, when he had his fly shop down, uh, you know, in East Portland, a little bit yeah. farther, 172nd mm -hmm. in Halsey. And he had Marty Sherman working with him then. And yep. your mom, of course, was there. And um, you guys were all... You guys yeah. were just all little Rug guys. Rats. You Rug know? Rats, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, your dad was... <clears throat> extremely helpful um, when it came to learning the steelhead fish yeah. to fly. Yeah. You know, as we all know, he was one of the pioneers yeah. to do that. Yeah. And Doug Stewart, yeah. you know, pioneer of the Max Canyon fly, the Stewart, all those flies. Yeah. And to this day, if I'm steelhead fishing, I still, those are my go-to flies. They still use the Max? They are still my go-to yeah. flies, no matter where That's I'm cool. at. Yeah. And they produce fish. Yeah. They still do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I came here in 1977. Uh, I had a job in the Forest Service. I was still in college, and yeah. I accepted that job and huh. lived in Eugene. Excuse me, I lived in Cottage Grove for a few weeks. And so, why did you come out here? <clears throat> what? Why? Why? It was for the fish. It was because Pennsylvania. And I've interviewed yeah. some huge mm -hmm. people. Um, you probably know uh, uh, Joe Brooks. Mm -hmm. Well, right. I, I so knew of him. You, yeah, no, no I, I've met Joe Humphreys. Yeah, Joe, I mean, actually, I said yeah. Joe Brooks. I met Joe mm -hmm. Humphreys. So I yeah. interviewed Joe Humphreys, mm -hmm. and we talked about Pennsylvania and how, I mean, Pennsylvania is a super hot spot for fly fishing. It's got excellent fly and, fishing. And, and those guys spend mm -hmm. their life there. But you, I mean, so why why west? So fishing, what? what there uh, must have been something that. With, you know, without getting into personal matters, yeah. you know, I realized. Uh, there was a stream I fished called the called the Assapin Creek, and at one time it had native brook trout in it, and uh, it was it ran through, you know, hardwood stands, uh, you know, not particularly gorgeous stands, but yeah. it was you know within seven six seven miles of where I lived, so I was able to ride my bike out there and catch fish, and one of the uh, one of the things that called that impasse in my decision to move was um, they inadvertently uh, poisoned it by, you know, breaking ground for a new division in its headwaters. Gotcha. I never thought that was, you know, an intentional poisoning. But yeah. according to the information that was available then, they struck an, ar an arsenic deposit oh, and man. poisoned that stream. Damn. And um, the other, I actually <laughs> used to, um, you know, trap a little bit and catch bass and crappie and other, you know, pickerel and stuff like that mm -hmm. at a nearby lake that eventually was essentially filled in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, it was yeah. just an early decision in my life that, this this human development and all these things that are going on yeah. around me are not suitable That's for it. the lifestyle that I'm going to pursue. Had so, you been out west yeah. before you made the move? I had. Yeah. Yeah, I had. Um, I spent some time, you know, with money in my pocket, hitchhiking around. Yeah. And when you could still do that. Oh, right. A little bit of that, you yeah. know, some of that, some of just bus rides, some planes, yeah. you know, and some driving myself. Uh, yeah. so explored the west for a couple of years, actually, oh, cool. before I moved here. Yeah. But I never had been in the Portland area. Yeah. I had been to the east side of the mountains, gotcha. like in the Bend area a little bit, and yeah. then up into Washington. And um, But I, anyway, I made that decision to move uh -huh. very early in my life. You, you, you know, knew you were coming. I knew I was going to be moving yeah. west. Yeah. You just didn't know exactly where. I didn't. Yeah. And, the, and the, <laughs> as, as chance has it, um, I filled out applications when I was in college for the Forest Service. Oh, yeah. 
really in a haphazard manner. Sure. You know, some guy named Richard approached me with these forms. He said, hey, you know, you're thinking about moving west here. You know, you might fill these out, yeah. see what becomes of it. And it was forgotten for easily six months until I received the call. There you go. That, uh, hey, you, you can have a job in the in the Umpqua National Forest if you can get here in seven days. Nice. Well, seven days wasn't easy, you yeah, know, back to, then. to pack in, you know, I left my second uh, semester in college early and oh, you did? Uh, I mean my second year last and semester drove and drove out immediately and been here since but um, I, I filled out applications from Alaska to Montana yeah. Oregon Idaho Washington Northern California and uh, huh. my, I really wanted to go to Montana yeah yeah but sure. that didn't work out no. so um, and it, as it as it panned out it was a fine decision to yeah. what you do to in take the my service? job well I was hired as a hydrologist um, oh, even no. though I was at my second year of college, I wasn't quite qualified for that. Yeah. But um, the applications for the Forest Service in those days added such things as, you know, favorite hobbies such yeah. as skiing, mountain climbing, yeah. um, you know, fishing, fly fishing, oh, yeah. you know, fishing in general, hunting, you know, all these things, whitewater rafting. They, they took all those things into consideration, yeah. I think. Yeah. And... And they, um, for that reason, you know, I filled out and, and, you know, I felt I actually filled the slot for a lot yeah. of those things. And so, you know, I was hired that. But generally speaking, uh, you know, I was part time help. Mm -hmm. And generally we just um, <laughs> gathered brush and threw them in piles. And, you yeah. know, we fought a lot of fires. And oh, stuff you did? Like that. Most of the fire, yeah. Yeah. Everybody gotcha. in the Forest Service is required to fight fires, at yeah. least back in the 70s yeah. when I was yeah. there. Um, huh. so, but the, the, you know, and, and the pay was absolutely horrible and, was it? you know, um, I, I can't say right now I'd probably be retired and doing well, but right. that's true. Yeah, you would be. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't used to that, but, but the upside to it was I discovered a lot of really cool, you know, um, remote places, little, little yeah, creeks and lakes and stuff Umqua, like that. Were you down there? No, we didn't yeah. do a lot of that. We were based out of uh, Cottage Grove. Oh, right. Cottage so lower, Grove lower office. Lower so we did some in yeah. the in the Umpqua so drainage. Lower. Which is cool because now... Steam water. Uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, Steamboat Creek. Steamboat, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. now you have, I mean, you got a good group of people you know down there. In fact, we went we down there once, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Went down to your buddy. I can't remember all the names, but yeah. and then even down to like um, Chilliquin and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean you pr pretty much introduced me to that area. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, so you had that early Forest Service, but you after that stayed. Yeah, you know there was there was definitely benefits of working for the Forest yeah. Service. I don't regret that at all. Um, it was, you know, it was quite an adventure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was, but again, you know, I I got to know some country that a lot of people probably never would have. Yeah. I found some hot springs that oh, yeah. you know that were ex I mean just absolutely yeah. off the charts gorgeous exactly. and remote and hardly anybody and to these there, days right? I'm not sure if anybody can find them. No. They're I mean you're, you're really hard early to get 80s to. there's probably not a ton of people. There wasn't. I mean Cottage Grove must no. be a super tiny little town. It was like a logging town or something. It was. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was. Huh. Nice little town. There. So that's it so you basically come so forest service you get here you're in the forest service for a couple of years or how? Uh, two years. Yeah, two years. So yeah. then how... That's part-time. Okay. Yeah. And then what's the... So that brings you into the like the early 80s. When do you start? Because now you've done this finished carpentry. Did you... How did you get into that? Well, as a as a means to try to make money to get myself to college and, you know, other ventures. Yep. Um, you know, my dad had taught me parts of the trade. Oh, really? He was a carpenter? So, yeah. He was a cabinet builder. Oh, there you and, go. And uh, general carpenter. And amongst other things, he's really Man. good with his hands. So your dad and, was yeah. a, like a huge influence for you. He was. Like fly fishing, absolutely. Carpentry. Yeah. And, and did you, when you yeah. left um, in 77, did you I and mean, your dad stay in good contact with them? Or where was he when you left? They stayed in Jersey, they were, yeah. which so they, they were, remained to. Yeah. They remained to. Same totally. with your brother. Yeah. Right? Your brother was there. And your My family. brother and sister. My After I moved, I was here, oh, I think it was three years, my sister decided to move. Oh, that's right. Yeah, her sister came And out. so she's still here in Oregon. Yeah. has a nice family that's and right. all those things. Um, yeah. So, but your dad but, was there and he... I mean, yeah, they stayed there. They stayed my there. brother stayed there yeah. with them. And... Um, huh. You know they 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 did well there. So yeah. New Jersey is not a terrible place, contrary to some people's no, beliefs. No. It could be worse. That's right. I asked um, somebody. I was talking <clears> to somebody from New York. Um, gosh, who was it on a recent interview? And he had the same thing as you, actually, the same exact thing. He said, 
Oh, this it was um, Richard Harrington. You probably don't know, but he has this this other pod, Steel Light podcast. Mm-hmm. And he basically his story was he was born out in uh, out in Wallalas, <clears throat> and because of his family, they took him back to New York. And he was like, mm-hmm. "Man, I did not want to leave Oregon." <laughs> and he made a vow. He was like, "I am coming back to Oregon as soon as I can." <laughs> 40 years later, because he met a woman and she didn't want to leave and they had Mm -hmm. kids and all that. So 40 years later, his kids give him a say, you know what, dad, go back to Oregon. Mm -hmm. So he moves back to Oregon. Oh, good for him. You know, I mean, a different story than yours, but I mean, it's the same thing, like the power of Mm -hmm. the West and, and, and I grew up, I grew up here. So for me, it's just natural. Well, let, you know, let me just say that, uh, you know, I, I've never regretted doing that. Um, but. I do have to say that there is some really, really interesting and great fishing on the East Coast. Right. There really is. Yeah. The, you know, I, 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 as, as soon as I was able to drive, you know, yeah. I was headed to the Pennsylvania streams, oh, yeah. um, Pine Creek, yep. uh, Slate Creek, right. you know, Penn's Creek. Oh, I fished Penn's. all of those creeks, and they yep. have very good fishing, good fishing on them. Brown? Some of them, rainbows brown, yeah, some yeah. some at brook trout, yeah. you know, um, in those days. Um, you know, a, a lot of those streams didn't fish well in the summer. Yeah. They, you, they were, you know, a spring Too and a lot. fall fishery. And in a lot of cases, those streams were closed all winter long oh, wow. in those days. But, and then I discovered the Catskills. Oh, and wow. And that was pretty much a done deal. What uh, was that like? Fishing... My, you know, I should add, my folks were really um, flexible when it come, came to traveling. They had a, they had the traveling bug themselves. So hmm. our family was always going somewhere camping. You mm-hmm. know, we went to New Hampshire, we went to Maine, you know, Michigan, yep. some places in Canada. So you so were camping for your We family. were exposed to a lot of places. Not, not traveling, you weren't doing other types of... Your vacation was camping. Camping. That's it was cool. mostly in, revolved around camping. That's cool. You know, there was, you know, mom wanted to go see the knickknacks. Sure. Or, you know, oh, yeah. but, you know, that notwithstanding, yeah. you know, mostly my interests were, are we going to be near a lake or some kind of water, even That's if it's it. a puddle, yeah. so I can it's wet amazing. a line. But back to the New York mm-hmm. fishery. Um, so we, we, you know, we explored northern New York, the Osable, or I'm not oh, yeah. sure how yeah, you say uh, that. Osable. 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 Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Michigan one and the yep. New York one. I always get right. the pronunciation right. backwards, perhaps. But yeah. Um, but the the Beaverkill, Willow Weemuck, and Shh. East East Branch Delaware offer some outstanding trout fishing, yeah. and it's super traditional. Catskills. The Catskills, and I I actually at one point, and I don't know that if Walt was still with us. I met Walt da- Daddy and his wife, and you did. Yes, wow. and I, I became pretty good friends with them early in my life. I, I was, just talked to his son on the phone mm-hmm. this week. Yeah, I can't think of her name now, but they were very, very, very nice Huge. people and willing to share any kind of information, yep. especially when it came to fly time. I was just going to say, did you learn? From I that. learned how to tie a proper March Brown from, See, and that's from I Walt heard. Daddy's wife, and no I can't kidding. remember her name. Yes. See, that's why yeah. I always you are always. And I, I'm glad you hit on this because mm-hmm. I want to talk about this because I've never been a great fly tie, a dry mm-hmm. fly tire, mm-hmm. because mainly my dad wasn't really never taught me. I was mm-hmm. never really that interested in it. But you were always really good with the dry flies. I wanted to ask you about that. So you learned from one of the greatest. Well, you know. She, it was the more the materials, I think, yeah. oh, right. for her. You know, at that time, you know, since I moved at you know, like 77, and I had been back in the late 80s at, yeah. at some juncture, you know, on, for a short, like, two-day yeah. stay. But I never saw Walt or his wife again. Uh, but at that time, when I was fishing there, which was the early 70s, you know, um, their fly shop was a house. That's it right. wasn't really a fly shop. No you walked, you knocked on the door yeah. or rung the bell like you were going to your neighbors to borrow a cup of sugar. Yeah, and it was come in, please. You know, and right. oh, and yeah, and then so their fly shop was, as I remember it, uh-huh. you walked through the living room area where there were some rods and reels and some memorabilia. Yeah. but then you walked through a, some entry doors and then you were into their tying room, okay. their desk. You know, with you know, materials and yeah. stuff like that. It was very, wow. very, very, very mom and pop. That's cool. And really warm, a warm, fuzzy feeling when uh-huh. you went in there. And they took me under their, under their, um, under their tutelage to some extent, mm-hmm. you know, um, which 
I wasn't sure who I was actually talking to, and then I just thought there were some people that, oh, right. you know, that owned this little fly shop. And because and by then they were pretty. Known. I think it was Roscoe that yeah. where they were in. They they were known for being great. They were, yeah. and they you know knew all the traditions, and they yeah. were well um, connected, you yeah. know, within the fly fishing community. Right. Oh yeah. So. Um, you know, I got to meet and fish with Ernie Schwiebert, uh-huh. oh, you yeah. know, a few times. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was through the Trout Unlimited oh, yeah. chapter, which I was a uh, sergeant of arms. Or yeah. Isn't that cool, Trout Unlimited? Like, because I'm kind yeah. of involved in now. I mean, they've been around way back then, you know, to your childhood. You remember them. Mm-hmm. And they're still just as strong. In fact, they're probably the most, they're probably the biggest conservation, fish conservation organization in, in the country. That's the good world. to hear. You know I mean? yeah. So TU is right now, I can tell you, just as strong as they've ever been. Probably the strongest. I'm happy to hear that because yeah. we need all the help we can get. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, um, it's, uh, but, you know, getting back to the New York, you know, uh, New Hampshire offered some some really great fish in Pimigawasset, the Seiko and if I'm pronouncing some of these incorrectly, excuse me. It's sure. been years since I've been up there. Yeah. But, um, some really great places there. But the West had something that I wanted, which was the big wide open spaces and the lack of people. Mm-hmm. Um, as it gets crowded more and more these days, you're seeing a little bit less of that. But yeah. you can still get away from that, get yeah. away from the crowds. And, yeah. you sure. know, for instance, on the Beaver Kill, I remember... Yeah more or less standing in line waiting to get into Hendrickson's pool so I could cast a fish because it was a almost like a gilly thing where uh-huh. you had to wait till the guy waded through it in front of you. It might be an hour before you could fish. And this was back then? Or? Back in the 70s, yeah. yeah. And what's it like now? Because you were just over... Uh, were you just over? Where were you at, Montana? Oh no, that that's Montana. Yeah. Oh, you're, I, talking, I, oh, you're talking Beaver. Yeah, I'm back. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm back. Yeah, yeah. I'm back. I was in, thinking, what was, what's in New what's the York. Beaver? What am I thinking of in Montana? I guess Beaver it's, head. Beaver head. Yeah. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, Montana's still great. Yeah. It really is. Um, yeah. I, my wife and I spent almost a month there recently, and we fished in a lot of places, kind of like a, oh, you know, a whirlwind tour. Oh, really? Uh, because, yeah, we, our main goal was to visit with my brother, who's yeah. now residing in Billings, yeah. Billings in an apartment. Yeah. So we, we hooked up with him on the Yellowstone and this and that and the other thing. Yeah. Uh, but... Montana still has yeah. fabulous it, fishing. There's still only, what, mm. less than a million people there or something? They're Not sure. Not I'm hearing that there's 40,000 new license plates every year, oh, so well, there's yeah, a lot of population. Know. In, well, you know, what's Billings like? Uh, you know, I, I'm not qualified yeah, probably. The, you know, yeah. my, my observation is that it's a, it's you know, it's... It, no, no, yeah. no, no. Um, it's, it's kind of, um, you know... It, I think it has its um, its heritage is mining, you know, logging oh, yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. it's more of an industrial area. Gotcha. I mean, it's not it's it's a nice town. I mean, yeah. there's there's a lot of really good things to say sure. about Billings, but I'm not qualified to yeah. you know to give a uh, you know an assessment of it that's accurate. No, you did, did you do any uh, any dry fly fishing while you're there? I did yeah. pretty much nothing but dry well, fly so fishing. Let's talk about this a little bit. Well, I, I did I, where, where it was available. Unfortunately, yeah. I was there in August and through early September, and yeah. there's just oh, not nice. too much going on with hatches. Yeah. But if you consider, you know, fishing ants and hoppers, oh, yeah. and you know things like big fluffy flies like royal wolves and I was just you know, say, stuff I just, like that. I just interviewed Dave Whitlock, and it, I asked they him, were. And he said, and he was like, "Oh, let's talk about terrestrials." Uh-huh. You know, Dave's hopper, mm-hmm. he's got like, I think he's got an ant pattern. Mm-hmm. So what did you guys fish? I mean, what were your, did you have one pattern that was? Uh, I tie a hopper pattern that I like. It's it's uh, very much like Dave's pattern. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have one handy to show yeah. you, but um, I did buy some store-bought patterns uh-huh. uh, from from a place in um from a place in Missoula, oh, um, and I can't remember his name. But I'd like to give him some good kudos yeah, right now. Grizzly. Oh, Grizzly! You went to the Grizzly. Yeah, Grizzly. Grizzly. And the the the, the pri- proprietor, the owner slash whatever, was very very graceful. Cool. Really helpful with great information. Awesome. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes to their. Yeah, place, and yeah. the grasshopper patterns he gave me were uh-huh. were really great. Um, and so, also some ant patterns. They were very productive. So what's so. The, if you talk about terrestrials, wherever you're fishing, I'm not sure where you're at, mm-hmm. but 
I mean, what's the key? Did you catch some fish on terrestrials? I did. Unfortunately for me, I was with, it was just my wife and I. Yeah. And so I'm the only one that can row a boat. Oh, right. You know, yeah. floating to Clark Fork yeah. or the Bitterroot gotcha. or any of those, you, you know. You want to be able to be you need to You need to drift and float gotcha. to cover the right Cast amount of water. Bank, get right off the bank. Exactly. Yeah. So I was limited to that to some extent. Gotcha. Floating to Clark Fork, I had some pretty good success with hoppers and ants. Yeah. Um, where I just stop and anchor up and wait, or waiting the bank, yeah, and doing that. Um, some nice fish in the Clark Fork. What are your, if you just said, just generally speaking, say your top five dry flies? If you just had a just general, whether you're going to Montana or you know Oregon, does it? How much? Is it uh, you know, I'm I'm quite a traditionalist. Yeah. You know, so you know, in older school, there are so many great patterns out right now that. Sometimes I just, it's mind boggling. I yeah. just, you know, I can't keep up with it. Some of them really, I think, catch fishermen, yeah. but I'm not sure how many fish they catch. That's right. Um, so, you know, I, I have my, if you will, bastardized versions of some of the more popular flies, mm -hmm. like Parachute Adams, mm -hmm. if that's where we're going with this. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Of course, terrestrials, ants. Yeah. I, I have this theory, and it's a homespun one, yeah. that trout, somehow get high on ants they love ants. Oh, really? i've been in lake situations many times yeah. when there's absolutely nothing going on huh. and a flying ant hatch occurs and every trout on the lake will blast them like a no shark eating a penguin wow you know they they just love ants so the flying you're talking in lakes Dry flies? Small ants, big ants, it doesn't matter. On Red, surface. black, cinnamon on the surface, yeah. Well, and what fly? Is there a name or just does it matter? I just tie just a regular old ant whatever. pattern with, you know, wings yeah. and a black hackle in the there middle. You they, You know, when it comes to ants, unless perhaps maybe like if you're a Henry Forks guy or, or yeah. a Spring Creek guy where they, they see a lot of bugs, yeah. they may be particular. Yeah. But in my you know, experience, especially on lakes or like when there's an overwhelming, uh, like, like a windy day on some place like the Deschutes, I've seen that. Yeah. Where there's all of a sudden just a lot of flying ants oh, or right. termites, okay. you know, to me, they're the same thing. Yeah. I'm sure fish don't de decipher yeah. the difference either. They just go haywire. So they just, they're blowing they, on the river and they, they just, just and even if they haven't seen them for a yeah. couple hours, they'll still blow them up. Nice. Um, and, um, so I, I don't, I've never seen, in fact, there's been times on Crane Prairie Reservoir mm -hmm. uh, where we've seen flying ants hit the water and I've run out of ant patterns and put on a black gnat. Right. And just, <laughs> they slurp it. They just blow it up. Yeah. You know, so really one matter. twitch and it goes down. Yeah. So, uh -huh. uh, but, you know, so getting back to the pattern selection, yeah. you know, Probably an ant, yeah. uh, for sure, grasshopper. Hopper. And back in the old days, we used to just use mother minnows. And in fact, your dad yeah. um, at one point said to me, uh, and this is many, many years ago, but I'll never forget. He said, you know, Gene, try putting a little bit of red throat, hmm. a little red in your... In your, in your uh, hopper? No, in your mother minnow. Oh, in your muddler. And back into the shoots, you know, wow. we had a lot more bigger fish than we, st you know, yeah. still plenty of fish there. But, um, you know, I could walk up way to bank with a just a greased hopper with a little bit of red in it, and yep. they just destroy that thing. No kidding. Yeah. Uh -huh. So your mother, so yeah. you're down, or you? No, going that was floating. Floating. Yeah, we put grease, just grease the crap out of them, wow. so they just float as high. One thing about hoppers is if the water's really smooth, and this is a tip for anybody out yeah. there, is you want to make sure that hopper, in most cases, if the water's smooth, that rides really high up on top. Yeah. Don't be afraid to grease them and get them up on their legs because yeah. when they start to sag down in the water, you start to get refusals. Gotcha. So it's a good thing to get them greased up and up high yeah. and, huh. you know, twitching them and all that stuff. But so, you know, of course, an elk hair caddis. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And, you know, uh, as, a, as an attractor pattern, I've always done good with humpies. Oh, and humpies, yeah, that's right. right or yeah, yellow humpies. You, you, you get me on the humpies, too. That's right. Humpies are good yeah. lake patterns. And are they good uh, stream for river patterns? Yeah, yeah, they're just good. I yeah. think I've just always it's had. All around, yeah. You can always seem to get a trout to rise yeah. to one of those flies. And red, black, the, I mean, Oh, uh, red or yellow, yeah, red usually. Or yellow. Yeah, red yeah. Or yellow. okay. Yeah, sometimes green. Okay, so that gives us, yeah, um, that's, that's like six, uh, six top. Dry is that flies. six? Yeah, I think I think well, yeah. I can't remember the first one. I think it was um, what was the first one? It wasn't parachute. Adams. Yeah, parachute Adams. Parachute exactly. Adams. Yeah, Adams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so and you mentioned my dad again. I, I did want to hit on this because my dad is obviously, you guys had, a, I think, if so you met my dad in the 70s. When did you guys do your first trip? It was probably on the Deschutes, right? When was your first trip? No. no. Uh, our first trip together was on Sandy. Oh, no kidding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when was that? Do you remember what, uh, He guided, he guided uh, me. I approached him in the shop because I had been, I had been catching steelhead. Uh-huh. But in a haphazard fashion, I was using all these East Coast methods. I was actually right. using like a, a like a skunk. No, no, oh, okay. I didn't. I was not. No, no. I wasn't. Even, no, I was not hip to egg, egg patterns no. yet. Um, I was fishing a skunk with a couple split shot, and just oh, dead yeah. drifting it like a nymph. Gotcha. Just, and just I would like a dry line, just kind of. Not even swing, just like, like, oh. like a, yeah, like a high stick gotcha. type of thing. And of course, I was catching them then, oh, yeah. but not in the same fashion as guys like your dad, yeah. Marty Sherman, and yeah. and uh, Frank Amato, and yeah, and yeah, Jim, TV, and, yeah. and those guys were swinging flies. And it was exciting, you know, it was yeah. intriguing to me because of that, the size of the fish and the aggressiveness of in that yank. Oh, that is yank the, yeah. I mean, the tug is the drug. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh-huh. And I didn't have an, an inkling of how to do that. No. And there was not a lot written about it no. then. And, of no. course, we had no YouTube or any no. of those. Do you remember Trey you know, Combs back in the day? I do. Yeah. yeah I've met, was, I've met was, Trey a couple of times. He was probably times. the one guy that wrote, had a book out. He did. He was writing mm-hmm. some stuff back in the day. Yeah, yep. And, uh, oh, uh, there was a lot of stuff done in southwest Washington. I can't think of all the oh, authors. Yeah. Bill. Uh, Bill uh, McMillan. Bill McMillan. Yeah, Bill McMillan. You know, was he was also... What's his name down in Eugene? Who had a fly shop in Salem at the time. Oh, um, uh, he invented this. He had the scarlet yeah, ibis for yeah, a while. He, uh, well, yeah, and he got. Uh, I just talked to him. He yeah. got busted for. Uh, that was a really interesting story. He got busted yeah. for fly tying, for uh, bringing by the feds. I he know. He told the story how he showed up and ate. I've heard that. cars were good. He told the whole I've, thing. No, like, I've heard several <laughs> stories, but I'd what like to hear the clarification. God, because I can just envision me tying flies he, in my shop. He, and cleared the air, he cleared the air and told his story. And you know, John Shuey, who I've yes, also I also had on. I, yeah. I went to John, me and John, we, we talked a little bit. I said, John, I just had, um, God, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on his name. <laughs> but I said, I just had him on the show. Uh, and John was like, you know what? That's his side of the story. Yeah. Kind of like saying, like, you know, I'm not quite sure if it's a, the whole truth. but uh, A fisherman that doesn't lie. Exactly. Imagine that. Exactly. I'm going to find this just because I, I, I don't want to miss this. I could, I'll put it in the show notes, too. But, um, yeah, it was a really great conversation because he told, he probably went off for 20 minutes on that story. And then as we got through it, he said, okay. Now let's get back to fishing and talking about fishing. I, I missed it, but I'll, I'll put it in. Um, Dave McNeese. That's right. Yeah, Dave yeah. McNeese. And mm-hmm. uh, it was just classic because he, he, I mean, he still has a steelhead hook that he invented that people love. Blue heron, I think it's called uh-huh. blue heron steelhead hooks. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I want to get back to my dad and that whole mm-hmm. story. But Yeah. So he, ta- he taught me to swing flies. So swing flies. Yeah. Uh, and even on the Deschutes. Yeah. Of course, the, the fishing for for steelhead then was just it was crazy it was, was phenomenal it like? what was it like in the early in the 80s early? oh it was just it was i had been in, invited to go to alaska and yeah. dc many times and you know my response is why really so you were you would go out there and oh the we session. were catching but my best day on the Deschutes is 27 steelhead hooks. no kidding yeah that was on that was in the september 23rd 1983 83 mm-hmm and um, anyhow, yeah. but I still wasn't even really didn't really know how to swing flies for steelhead yeah. cr- correctly. I tried it, you know. I yep. I really wasn't, you know, getting it. And <laughs> one of your dad's favorite um, lines was, you know, well, you just cast it down ac- and across, and you hang on to your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's right. And you know yeah. that that's classic yeah. Doug Stewart, yeah. you know. Yeah. But he was the guy who took me, uh, he actually took a friend of mine, George Miller. We're still good friends. Okay. Uh, we did, we did it. I did a trip with your dad down to Sandy or did the side channel, which so, we used so to you fish. So hi- you hiked in. You went we from, hiked you went in. the hatchery. We were very, it was a very successful trip. It was? We, yeah, we hooked fish and he was showing me how to fish flies on a sinking line then. And, and what sinking, so was this the teeny, like the T300 sinking line? Yeah, he was used, up and nah, he, I, I think at that time it wasn't the teeny line no, because we were still the, the all the messing line, around right? with, no, we oh, were, was they it? were still, they were still hybrid lines. They uh, were still... We were still dinking around. Yeah. Now, Teeny had come out with this line, but it was yeah, right it was in that early. same time period. And now a quick word from our sponsors. 
The Fly Fishing and Tying Journal has a great fall edition that's out right now. You can find Lucas Stevens, who visits Winston Fly Rods in the fall edition, for an insider look and a rare interview with Ted Leeson. Patrick Wall pays homage to Harry Lemire's tight in hand Atlantic salmon flies. Boots Allen takes us to the pond with a master class in steel water. Dennis Dobble also travels to Scotland in search of uh, salmon. Good to have him uh, him on here. I'd love if you could stop by uh, right now and uh, just press pause. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash FTJ and subscribe to the magazine. You'll get that issue delivered to your door. That's wetflyswing.com slash FTJ. We are also supported by SoFly Gear, led by Chief Apparel Guru and Team USA Youth Fly Fishing member, James Carlin, who has a great clothing line that you're definitely going to love. SoFly's mission is to produce clothes that look good, perform well, and can be worn on and off the water. Plus, uh, most importantly, are manufactured uh, with under sustainable methods. They do this with bamboo. Bamboo is a, this shirt has a great mixture. I've been wearing it, it all around. It dries quick, it stays warm, it's soft, uh, it's, it's good to go. Pretty amazing stuff. You got to check it out. So um, if you can, you can head over to wetflyswing.com slash SoFly and get started today. Uh, that'll help support uh, James and the podcast in one shot. That's wetflyswing.com slash S-O-F-L-Y. Okay, back to the show. Did you ever use the teeny lines? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I still do. And you still you know? do? I still have some to yeah. this day. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're fish catching lines. But yeah. your dad was, you know, the very... Swinging flies for steelhead is an art that I think a lot of oh, people yeah. really don't understand. Line no. speed is extremely critical and it's overlooked. Yeah. Um, in any kind of a scenario yeah. where you're trying to swing flies for steelhead on a sinking tip or oh, a sinking man. line, it's so critical, yeah. uh, you know, and it's uh, people talk about the presentation, but that line speed is everything. Yeah, yeah. And your dad taught me how to correctly, yeah. to correctly cast, you know, mend and use the correct line speed. And it was a huge revelation yeah. for me. It's was was, like, wow. What was the, when you think about correct line speed, I mean, how do you get, what did he show you that, you know what I mean? Like, what is correct? Like, how, how do you even know? Well, the first thing he taught me was, uh, reading the water correctly, All right. looking at the speed of the water yeah. out in front of you, whether it's slower, close to you, or faster out, yeah. you know, those kinds of yeah. things. Braided, cur braided currents are extremely hard to fish, yeah. even huh. though they can, they can hold, you know, steelhead. And he, he would teach me such things as, Gene, you know, don't cast so far across at the 90 degree thing. Make sure you're getting it down at three quarters, you know, yeah. in braided water or really slow water. Hey, Throw it up a little bit, put a downstream end in it, yeah. so we're picking up the right, right line speed. And I've watched your dad, oh, yeah. you know, not recently because he's older and we yeah. haven't fished together as much. No. But I watched your dad go and fish places that were really difficult for other people to yeah. fish and hook fish in there. Right. You know, yeah. and to me, I was just perplexed. Right. You know, it's like, wow, this cat. Yeah, he I know. he can get it done. That's the thing. There's something about and, that. He was, you know, mm -hmm. my dad. I think mm -hmm. the secret is, is that, you know, there's this athletic ability. It's mm -hmm. funny because he was kind of almost a pro athlete. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to so many people now, over 160 <clears throat> people that are some of the best in the world fly mm -hmm. fishermen, right? And there's this theme of, um, you know, for example, you know this guy. Um, who's the lake? Who's the lake guy down south? Um, oh, Danny Rickards. Yeah, Danny Rickards. Yeah, I had yeah. Danny Rickards on. Yeah. We talked, and he. I mean, Danny Rickards broke out such a great episode. Uh -huh. He took lake fishing and just made it so clear uh -huh. for everybody to take it in. And but the cool thing was, is like we we talked about baseball, and he was this close to pro baseball. Uh, athletic people have a tendency to be. Uh, to have a head start, let's yeah, say. That's true, right? Yeah, so, and yeah. I mean, and you don't you have a little bit of? Oh yeah. 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 What was your What mm -hmm. was your sport? Oh, I played a lot of sports, yeah. but basketball. And basketball, mostly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah, I I, I ran track yeah. a lot of that. So you got you the same know, thing. The but a lot of basketball. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And you know, I, we played all sports. We were. I was yeah. born in a neighborhood where there was like seventy three kids on our block. What, what was so, so, we, we joke about this because yeah. you're Shropshire, right? You came up. I mean, I think mm -hmm. of we always. You've got that, um, you know, it's like the, the mob, right? You're the whole thing. I mean, what, what was it like? Uh, you know, that's, that's overdone. That's but, overdone. Yeah. But, but what was it like? I mean, take us, take us back again. We're sw swinging back around. But to growing up, were you in, you know, what was that like in Jersey? Were, were you around people that were kind yeah. of uh, real, like legit? Yeah. It yeah. wasn't. Yeah. There were, there were, I was surrounded by really awesome people and yeah. awesome families. Yeah. I had no idea what I had. Yeah. 
you know, because it was just automatic. Yeah. You know, the people were great that I grew up with. All my friends there were, were yeah. really great. Um, my high school uh, conditions were great. You know, so many people have these clicks and yeah. they, I couldn't wait to get out of high school. You liked it. I cried when I got out no of high kidding. school. That everybody, all the black, Hispanic yep. people, the white people, we were all really So it was, it was a diverse, one. so it wasn't like, so you had, you know, yeah. the Catholic. You know, it was, you, no, it was everybody. very diverse. Really, and very was diverse. mixed. There wasn't these big, uh, yeah. there wasn't these big, like, you know, you're, whatever you're this so we don't talk no nah, not much no it was huh. extraordinary wow. and you know i i didn't realize what i had because it's different know. in oregon right i mean oregon well, around a little bit right i, mean, I you know i was here in my diverse. late was, i came here in my early 20s and i was kind of secluded being in the forest service so yeah. i wasn't exposed yeah, yeah, to yeah. a lot of those things yeah. like back there but no it was a great place to grow up yeah. i i don't i don't regret a bit being back there yeah. i met my wife nancy oh, really? back there. that's right yeah yeah, so, yeah nancy's it yeah Anyhow, so that that's yeah. been a, a, a great success yeah. and, and good life. So, but uh, yeah, your dad has taught me a lot of things um, when it yeah. comes to that you know approach. And um, uh, I have a tendency as a flycaster to be uh, impatient. Yeah. You know, I'm st I'm still um, still hell bent on catching fish. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be the biggest and the most, but I'm still. Yeah, that, it's kind still, of built into me where your dad was a lot more patient, you uh, know, really. a very fluent caster. Yeah. Your dad would oftentimes say, Gene, why don't you just sit down for a while and just enjoy the scenery around you? Yeah. You know, of course, I'm 18 younger than no years, kidding. Years younger than he is. So, yeah. oh, and that he's. He, are you really? Yeah, you are. That's right. He's, he's, he was born in 39. When were you born? In 54. Oh, so, wow. No kidding. Yeah. So oh, we're geez. 15 years you're apart. You're 15 yeah. years younger. Yeah. So you're. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Dang. So he taught me a lot about that. You know, it was really actually. Um, huh. It was actually uh, in a lot of ways a turning point in my angling because I became less aggressive. Yeah. And just, you know, fishing with him for the years that we did, you know, it was like, hey, right. you know, sit down, enjoy this, you know, for a minute. That's cool. That, you know, um, I never thought about that that much that my mm -hmm. dad was like that because mm -hmm. I think of, I think I told the story once where I watched him get in a fight on the river one time because he had that side of him too. He's been right? there a couple times yeah, too. Yeah, what, 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 what was the deal with that? <laughs> oh, I don't really want to share those moments, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. there are a few incidences that yeah. we were quite, I, you know, looking back on them as always, yeah. you know, uh, you know, hindsight's always 2020. Yeah. There's alcohol probably mixed Probably, in more than likely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah, I've heard people <laughs> say that where they were like, okay, you know, without alcohol, I'm this person. And with alcohol, it's like I just change. Most of those arguments were based on like fighting over water or. Exactly. And it's still to know, me, my friends. Or, kind of, or like people who were just rude and we. Yeah, uh, right. I right. was bootleg guiding back there at early age, yeah. too. And he was legitimately guiding. Right. I was bootleg guiding. Yeah. You know, uh, I can say this now, BLM. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a, way yeah, over, yeah, you know, we're so it. much water. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, even though there was an extraordinary amount of traffic yeah. on it to shoot stand, people would still fight for the best steelhead runs. Okay. Didn't happen in trout water. No, no. But the steelhead runs were, you know, it was fairly common yeah. to fish, if you knew what you were doing, to swing a fly on yeah. the Deschutes. And hook a half a dozen to a dozen fish between two guys in an evening. Yeah, and so very common. And so, and I'm thinking, I always go back to our camp, which is known now, yeah. you know, Stewart's Camp. We don't even yeah. never even call it that. Upper, but now you go upper down, Locket. In fact, or it just happened this, this last yeah. year. We were out there, and somebody uh, came down, um, and they said, "Oh, we were going to camp down there, but we uh, we heard that was Stewart's Camp." So, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I know. I was like, "Oh man, that's that's great." And that yeah. all goes back to my dad and uh -huh. stuff, but. When I think of that water, because it just seems like, I mean, obviously there's less fish than there used to be mm -hmm. right now, but it just seems like the water doesn't produce as much as, I mean, what do you mm -hmm. remember about that water? That, that run? Well, do that, you remember that being a very productive? Uh, it was, in in my opinion, it was the top 10 runs. There you it go. It was in the top 10 runs on the Deschutes yep. River. And at times it could be, the fish will hold, they would hold in that whole stretch. And, and what part? So, so not just the top, not the middle, not the, the whole bottom, thing. The whole thing. The you, whole could, you could just, you would fish the whole thing. From knock, would... knock all the way down. Yeah. Or or jet, or jet, jet pump. Yeah, you know, some people down. call it knock, knock. Yeah. But from jet rapids all the way down to what I named the two butthole, the, the two, two cigarette oh, yeah. butthole. Oh, which one is that? Is that that's the... the next one down from the boxcar. Oh, yeah. So that's above, that's just That's where you run out of water. goddamn 
run on the other side. Yeah, that's that right. Rock. So the yep. grassy spot. It's just above the grassy oh, spot. Oh, just above the it's, grassy. Yeah, it's not the grassy oh, spot. Oh, yes, the riffle. It's a little riffle. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Call that the two, you know, the funny two thing cigarette bucket. When, when I go Because you now, throw it after two smokes. Totally. Yeah. When I go now, because it has been tough, <laughs> the one spot I go where I know I can probably hook a fish is that one. Yeah. That's the one I just It's go a go-to to, spot. It's a go-to spot. And they'll hold in there, And you're too. only waiting this deep. Yep. It's a picture of Jim, that Jim Colantino took oh, me no in kidding. here. Yeah, somewhere. Uh, it's somewhere here yeah. in the archives. Uh, Jim and I pulled down there because there was somebody in your dad's spot. Yep. This was a deer trip many years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. This was Jim Colantino. Jim Colantino. Who's still around somewhere, too. I saw Jim recently, oh, yeah, cool. in Maupin. Yeah. Anyhow, I was rowing Jim down, and we came down around the past, uh, you know, your dad's spot, yeah. the boxcar, we used to call used to, yeah. it. Lock Which it, is burned. You know? Yeah. Um, and there were fish rolling everywhere. Steelhead. They were just rolling no all through that, and I couldn't get in that yeah. spot because there was people camped there. It was the beginning of the deer trip in back in the 90s somewhere. It's I don't know. The, the, the photograph is, yeah. is labeled. But Jim and I came down through there, and Jim at that point had not landed a steelhead yet oh, wow. on a fly. Yeah. So I said, Jim, this is your chance. We pulled over at this two butt hole. Yeah. And Jim said, No, lad, you go ahead and do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. You know, Jim. Yeah. And I said, no, Jim, come on. This is your chance. Yeah. It's your big chance. And yeah. I, I mean literally there were, oh. you know, dozens, if not Doesn't 50 steelhead yeah, that's rolling. The easiest, that's the easiest spot. To and do. we had maybe 20 minutes of light left. Yeah. Damn. You know. So I was rigged up, and we yeah. both were actually in gym. No, lad, I'm going to set up to camp you fish. Yeah. And it was the only time in my life that I've made seven casts and hooked seven steelhead. Wow. And he got, we have pictures of some of them there. No kidding. But you couldn't even get a short cast out without a fish eating yep. a fly. Yeah. That was, a, that was, I mean, that's never happened to that's me. That's what's cool about that room because it's, it yeah. comes out of the shallow riffle and then dumps into the slot, which yep. eventually mm -hmm. goes out into a deeper, slow water. Mm -hmm. but you and got they this, hold right there. But you got yeah. this little window of area mm -hmm. that. And they were there. They were, their fish rolling yeah. right around my waders. Damn. You know? um, wow. But yeah, uh, so your dad taught yep. me a lot about, and uh, also the Deschutes River. The yep. lower Deschutes, your dad taught yep. me most of, yep. you know, the hazards, the runs, you know. So you went down, when he went down, what was your first trip down the lower Deschutes? Was George it? Miller that was and your dad. So you yeah. went down in mm -hmm. my dad's boat. We went down in the Yellow Raft. Yellow Raft? Yeah. He had a, my dad before yeah. he had a, didn't he have yeah. a drift boat back then? I thought he had a coffee. No, he went down in the in the raft that time. No kidding. Yeah. You three in a in a yellow mm -hmm. raft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh and the then, next time we went down, we went down in the strip boat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he had, had he had, he no, it was it was no, it was um it was Rays. Oh, it was, oh, by then he had yeah. the Rays. Oh, yeah. wow, this is already mm -hmm. into Rays. That's right, because he mm -hmm. sold Koffler boats for a while. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, he may have had the Koffler he boat then. Had, I can't uh, remember yeah, sure, the, sure. the boat. I was so excited about the steelhead fishing. Yeah. And it was a great trip. It was. We, we still didn't, George and I still didn't know, you know, how to swing a fly properly. But we dumped in at, I'll, I'll never forget this, uh, and I still have pictures of it. Yeah. Uh, we, the three of us, dumped in at, um, and I think this was the drift boat, at the um, rock garden at um, Max oh. Canyon. Oh yeah, across the cross. Right Max. across the oh, right yeah. across. We you dumped, started. You just went in there. We went right in there, and there were fish rolling everywhere. Damn. And your dad immediately hooked like a twelve pounder. I mean, like first cast. Really. And we hooked like I can't remember. I'm not going to exaggerate, sure. but it was at least seven between the three of us before we even moved down river 100 feet. Nice. You know there were fish everywhere, and all the way what down we yeah. hooked fish. You're, you're not even barely off the boat ramp. That's mm -hmm. a great start. That's why that run is a good mm -hmm. place to start. At the box car, your dad and I hit 51 steelhead in a weekend down there. Jeez. We took turns. We had a guy trip, yeah. which I helped him on. Yeah. It, it was his trip, but. Right. They left and we yeah, stayed so and fished. What mid 80s? That was in the probably the early 80s. Early 80s yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting. I look now that we've had all this time has mm -hmm. gone by. We've seen the steelhead, you know, because the steelhead numbers have been doing this. And, and in the 80s, you were hitting it probably up here. Somewhere in the 90s, it started to tank back down. And you mm -hmm. know, mid 90s, it's down here. Started to come back up because in the mid 2000s, we had I some was fish fishing then. hard. We had, we had a couple of days. I went again, same thing. I went with yeah. a good buddy, me and my other two guys. 
Mm-hmm. We fished it over, I think it was a three and a half day trip, and we had 50 fish. Yeah. And that was in the mid 2000s. It's still possible yeah. in the lower but, river, but they since say. Then, yeah. Since then, it's gone back down. Yeah. Who, yeah. who knows? You know, yeah. I, I'd rather did not get into yeah, the, no. you know, no, the, the don't. scientifics yeah. of right. what's going on yeah. there. But yeah. Um, yeah, your dad taught me a lot, and I, I give him a lot of credit for that. Mostly steelhead fishing. Yeah. Uh, the trout fishing thing. That's right. Even though the western, you know, the shoots is 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 unreliable in terms yeah. of hatches, and you know, except for perhaps the stonefly hatch, yeah. and you know maybe the fall right. caddis hatch, or yeah. you know it's, it's not blue wing olives is pretty reliable all winter long, or whatever. Yeah. But there are, the other hatches are unreliable. So you and, never got that excited about? Well, you fished trout. No, the I fished. No, I I almost exclusively fished. Trout yeah. on the shoots until I realized that these six and seven pound fish that were ripped me up were steelhead. Oh, right. <laughs> you know? No kidding. Um, yeah, I didn't get that figured out. Your dad helped me with that too. Yeah. You know, he's like, hey, you dumbass, you know, yeah. those aren't trout. Those yeah. are, you know, he actually thought the same thing with his dad oh, that's right. many years ago. They thought they were catching big trout. That's right. On steelhead yeah. flies, you know, or wow. on trout flies. That's how that whole that's thing. That's exactly went, it, yeah. As I understand oh, yeah. it. Yeah, that's yeah. the story. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, you know, had a lot of enjoyable trips and, yeah. you know, uh, your dad was, that's cool. again, taught me many, many things about Well, you know, and that's the power of the, you know, you think about the parents because mm-hmm. my dad, you know, your dad had an influence on you. My dad had a big, big influence on me. Now I'm having an influence on my girls, mm-hmm. you know, and they're starting to get into hunting and stuff. I had no, you know, I never even said anything about, it, but just like they're just like you, right? You were around it. Mm-hmm. Hey, if your dad was sitting here right now. What, what would he be just was he just like you no 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 no, no. he was he was a very subdued person you really? know he's pretty quiet yeah. pretty shy so he wasn't a talker know? not really yeah you he know he wasn't a bullshitter he, he wouldn't be going uh through. you know he he enjoyed life from the standpoint of you know just being honest he was an old school guy yeah. you know he wasn't in World War II, I, you know, he oh, was right. in the service or anything, but he was a, of that generation, yeah. you know, where people didn't use necessarily a lot of words to express themselves. Gotcha. They, they, oh, yeah. they proved themselves by example that's true. and not, yep. you know, not, not by, you know, braggery that's or right. if that's the right terminology to use. Uh-huh. You know, he I, was, he was a doer and not a talker. That's right. You know, that's, um, that's when good. he talked, everybody listened. Yeah. That's cool. You know, so... Huh. Nice. Well, yeah. and so, I mean, all, so, and we go back to it. So we're talking a little about steelhead. I mean, trout, there's a lot of places we go, but I mean, now you're, so, so what do you have going now when you look at the next uh, five, 10 years, what's getting you excited when you think about fishing? Now? Well, being, having the semi-retirement and then full retirement coming up in the near future, you yeah. know, um, I reflect on this summer uh, where since, since in this year, since late May, um, i been a trout bum. Yeah. My wife doesn't like that terminology. But, no, it's it. Um, it is what it so is. I am a trout bum. So um, you just pack the car, pack the boat, and you're out there just camping. And- I've spent very little time sitting on my butt. It's been in a boat or standing in a river somewhere. There you go. I, I'm hoping I've never been happier with that. No <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. So you don't have anything yeah. tying you back to actually have to come back uh no so, i wouldn't say that but yeah. you know it's and and it's good to come back yeah. you know i still enjoy woodworking i still i'm, I'm going to yeah. continue doing limited amounts of work yeah. vocationally um and i you know i because i enjoy that facet of my life and my music is real important yeah and my, bird hunting my, too right you're still bird hunting yeah i'm an avid bird hunter uh, are you still you still we're leaving next week no for kidding. for almost two weeks oh, with, is, is with this don the, stokes is this the same that old trip that the veil used? trip that no you've kidding. been with us on oh, yeah shit. yeah yeah, in fact, you're invited to come this year if oh, you like. Man. I, I'm yeah. eventually again. It comes back mm-hmm. to like I'm getting this point where it's so cool because you know my June is eight. She's gonna be mm-hmm. nine, mm-hmm. and they're getting so into that range where yeah. they can. They're gonna be come with me on everything. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's mm-hmm. just like okay, I'm going on a trip. Here mm-hmm. they are. How cool. And they're out doing as much as, you know, they're going to be out fishing me pretty soon. Uh, it's you in their I mean? blood. I know. It is. <laughs> and the cool thing I love about it is that the fact that it's cool because, you know, they're female. And I love the uh-huh. fact that it's like that doesn't matter whatsoever. They're just as passionate as they, you know what I mean? You know, when I was in Montana, and I think it's true throughout most of the West, but I, I noticed that there were a lot of male and female Both. female teams. Oh, no kidding. 
Yeah, there was a lot of guided yeah. trips, yeah. you know, on the Yellowstone. I saw quite a few up at Clark cool. Fork, Bitterroot, yep. uh, excuse me, um, the Blackfoot. Oh, the Blackfoot. I saw yeah. lots of, of uh, you know, either husband, wife, girlfriend, mm-hmm. boyfriend, you know, teams yep. uh, being guided there. And I, I'd love it. I love oh, seeing yeah. that. I really think it's, it's important. In fact, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not a certified casting instructor, but I've done plenty of that, yeah. you know. Um, but the, my easiest students have been women. Yeah. They're, they've been, they don't have any preconceptions about yeah. casting. Yeah. And, uh, for instance, I, you know, I didn't teach her to cast, but Marlon Rampey, my friend, oh, yeah. The, yeah, the guide, uh-huh. uh, one of the, I just have to say the, in my opinion, he's one of the best guides in Southern Oregon when it comes to trout fishing. He's, well, he's great. And Marlon, that name has come up mm. and he's, yeah, he's big down there. He's he, he's a great fisherman. Yep. Marlon and I go way back. He he still had fished with me back on the shoots, you know, a few times. And but he his wife Susan is like a um, it's like a a work of art to watch her cast. Yeah, she has the most beautiful no fluent kidding. motion. She's also athletic. Oh yeah. So yeah, she's amazing. a champion trap shooter. Oh really. So, so back, back to hunting, back kind to of that. bird hunting yeah. and fly fishing go together. It seems they, like they seems like it, you know. A lot of people. Shuey, yeah. Shuey's a big bird mm-hmm. hunter. John Gearch. Oh, is he? Yeah, he is too. There you yeah. go. Uh, so, yeah. and it's, well, before we get out of here, I just want to touch on the Southern Oregon, because uh, who's the <clears throat> old guy down there? There's a Native American guide, right? Who's the down in Southern? What's his no? Uh, I'm not sure. I oh, know him. Sure. What's his name? Uh, Butch Breeding. Yeah, there's one guy. Anyways, I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to think of. There's a guy that somebody is telling me about who's down there on the Klamath somewhere. But ah, uh, so, I know who you're yeah, talking, you know talking about. about. I met him. Yeah. Um, he is it. It's a. Um, yeah. yeah it's a. About. It's a father son team. Yeah, I've been wanting to get look him mm-hmm. up and get him on because I think. Uh, well, Marlon would probably be a good guy to talk to. Too, yeah, right? he would know. Or Randy might know. Yeah, too, yeah. Because Marlon, and he, yeah. he's still guiding down there. This Marlon is, is yeah. yeah, yeah. I just spoke with him last yeah, week. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I haven't had a ton. Like I said, um, we did a little bit on lakes, and I mean, you know, obviously mm-hmm. we're not going to be able to get it because the lakes is a whole other mm-hmm. thing, which you taught me a lot about. Uh, I've been doing a lot of lake fishing. Montana was yeah. out of this uh, world. So lake that's why the motor. So the motor, you, mm-hmm. yeah, drift boat with a motor does it all it's not the fastest yeah. thing in the world and if it works so, out this friend of yours I'm, I'm excited because i've been thinking about getting a motor so if i can come up with uh you know save a little money and get no, we can motor, make that happen that's cool that's, that's i think awesome. he probably has five or six sitting there oh, right now shit, that's perfect yeah oh, man, I'm so, in fact megan and the kids they're all like all right mm-hmm Let's, let's go let's get on the water they're like they're way more excited than me they want to get mm-hmm. in the drift boat they want to get out and i'd love to get out that's so good right now that's great i know that's really it's, great it's uh it's more and more people need to get out you know i mm-hmm. i'm i'm kind of i i, I have mixed feelings about that you know yeah. because there's just so many people on the water these days yeah. that at times it becomes exasperating you know some of the I wish that people would be more respectful of each other, yep. you know, in a lot of ways, yep. you know, they're, they're more and more people cut you off right. and try to, you know, intrude yeah. in your water and all that stuff. Now, you know, it's not, it, it's, it's become a situation where you need to be cognizant of it yeah. rather than just going outside. But with, you know, not that notwithstanding seeing your gals get out like that yeah. and again seeing people get out in the water that really appreciate it respect yeah. it you know um it, it's it's very encouraging I do. yeah no, it's I'm, cool. I'm, I'm excited well before we get out of here i have this little uh, little thing called the, the 222 which is top two well we talked about flies but talk to top two tips top two flies top two resources and we usually it's usually on a topic we're talking about we've been talking a little bit about trout fishing mm-hmm. and steelhead mm-hmm. and we talked about flies i guess you know, a trout flies, you, you gave six here. Mm-hmm. If we stayed on that, would you want to give a couple of tips for more like dry fly fishing or, or steelhead? What would, would you be, what do you think you could, do you have any tips that come to mind where you could help somebody if they're listening? Um, I think that <clears throat> a lot of, mostly I think it's been touched on, but what I see people doing, especially in lake fishing, let, let's just yeah, concentrate let's, let's on that that's just great. for a moment. And that's, in fact, I wanted yeah. to talk lakes. Because lakes, lakes are so problematic. They're yeah. just, they, it's just a whole nother world yeah. uh, of thought, yeah. you know, the thought process. It's complicated. Yeah. And it changes li- like by the hour. 
Really? Um, yeah, it does. It can. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Sure. Um, I see people a lot of times fish in lakes and they don't use long enough leaders. Mm. It's almost it's almost hmm. a rule of thumb, even with a sinking line. Now, now we're getting into semantics here, yeah. which I don't want to go into yeah. every every no, example. No, no. But I see people fishing, like for instance, like a, a difficult lake to fish, like Crane Prairie Reservoir. Yeah. It's clear water. Yeah. Yeah. You might have a favorite saying about crane: "Crane giveth and crane taketh away." <laughs> It can be Tough. just a a mother right. to fish. It can God. be really difficult. Yeah. Generally speaking, I see that they they're not using long enough leaders. And what's a, what's a good what's a long at, enough at crane? If the water's still fifteen feet, fifteen foot at least, and you foot. want to use and if you know if you're fishing especially a floating fly, yeah. Usually 15 feet minimum. Yeah. If you get some riff flow in the water and they're aggressive, you can come down from that. And the yeah. tip, it should be not less than four feet and five yeah. feet's better. And six X or depending. You have to go pretty fine. Yeah. You know, with some of the higher end fluorocarbons these days, you can go with a smaller diameter. Yeah. Gotcha. But beware that they are not as durable yeah. as some of the thicker, like okay. Maxima is an extremely durable line, yeah. but it's got a thicker diameter. Thicker, so, yeah. so, so you, you got to, you have so to So use this a long leader. Mm -hmm. What else for lakes would you tell somebody if they're going out, say they're in a, um, well, say they're in a drift boat. Say they're just rowing around. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, uh, uh, you need to find the right spot in the lake. Yeah, how do you do that? Lakes, that's 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 a difficult thing. You know, number yeah. one, I mean, I don't use a fish finder. You I don't. probably should. Yeah, don't you have? I thought you had them. I've had them, and yeah. you know, and they they work to some extent, especially yeah. if the water's got some depth to it. You, you know, know, Ricker said he broke it out very mm -hmm. simply. He said, "You need to do not fish." And I've had other people contradict this, but mm -hmm. he said, do not fish the deep water. You want to catch those fish as they're coming into the shore to feed. Mm -hmm. So you want to be here as they're coming in. Mm -hmm. You want to catch them when they're coming mm -hmm. in. That's what he said. Well, especially where he fishes, which, yeah. by the way, Marlon Rampey is the guy who taught me how to fish the lakes down there. doesn't yeah. make me any kind of an authority, yeah. but um, we do well. Klamath Lake. and Oh, the Klamath Lake. Yeah, yeah agency Klamath agency. and all those. Yeah. Um, so I give you know kudos to him for yeah. that, and he understands Where can you that. find Marlon? Does he have a... A website or I believe it's uh, I'll put a link in the show notes. I I'm I'm yeah. not sure, but I think it's uh Damn. West, West, I think it's West Western Fly Fishing Adventures. Okay, I'll, I'll find it. And, Something uh, like that. The cool thing, now you're reminding me. Gosh, remember that trip we did to Williamson? Yeah. You took me down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I always talk, oh, I don't talk about that, but I just remember it, that we went down there and that was such an amazing river. And, mm -hmm. and we, you know, here and anchored and you couldn't see anything, but, and then, mm -hmm. yeah. and then agency and, yeah. I mean, and then climate, I mean, that is an amazing yeah. area. It's, it's, yeah. it's unique. Yeah. Extremely different to fish, huge fish. Yeah. And Check very out. different. The first, I, you know, I fished down there back in the eighties Yeah. and I spent weeks and weeks down there and never hooked a fish. Yeah. Shocked. yeah. Just, well, what, what's I, the secret you know, down there? So long leaders probably there too. No, in the water. Just knowing where you got to know where the water yeah. is. You yeah. know, even you gotta, lake. So if you're in no, Plymouth. well, that's a different thing now. Okay. You know, the lakes are different. But Danny Rickard's assessment of fish and drop offs and yeah. you know fish passages are, are fairly accurate. Yeah. But you also you look for cold water sources. You look mm -hmm. for springs. Okay. Um, you look for you know weed beds. How could you find a spring? Maybe follow track vegetation. Or uh, well, um, out mass. in open water, one of the best ways to find a spring is look for bubbles. Oh, there you go. And yeah. then usually in spring areas, the water will be, of course, clear. Yeah. You know, It'll so if you gray. have, so if you have, you know, different water gotcha. clarities, okay. a drastic, like yeah. if you're Super boating clear. along or tubing along yeah. and all of a sudden you're in the middle Just of the stuff. lake and it goes from, you know, kind of a pea green or yeah. a lime green to clear, there's a spring Boom. somewhere. Yeah. And you want to try yeah, to mark a those. Tip. A lot of times um, springs will appear like in a rocky bottom or a weedy area and there because of the nature of springs they blow sand or what up out mm. of the substrate and so you'll have a clear area mm -hmm. you know it, it, it can be from a few inches around to 30 40 50 feet around yeah um so huh. those are places to look for um leeward parts of the lake especially if it's windy and you don't know the lake Oh, so leeward is, what is that? Is that you want to go to the windy end of the lake and fish. Oh, because, really? Yeah, that's where the the food will get the blown, will get blown, will get blown so down there. So even though it's there. choppy and nasty, yeah, and the fish, there. In, in bigger lakes, that's not necessarily oh. the case. You're not going to have a fish that's going to swim two miles to the under, other yeah, end of the lake gotcha. to eat, you know, say, blown-in ants. But yeah. 
but in smaller lakes, okay. you know, that's happened to me like in places like Gold Lake in the Oregon Cascades, mm. you know, fly fishing lake, yeah. um, the, the lava lakes and, oh, lava, you yeah, know, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is good. So, mm -hmm. so lake, so we got, so two, and then what if we go to two patterns? What are your favorite lake patterns? Well, one's got to be a woolly bugger. And really? Yeah. Just it's a got to be it. Yeah. Black and, woolly bugger. Yeah. Um, I, I really, I'm probably going to get some argumentation about yeah. this, but unless you're fishing woolly buggers under, and, and they do fish what they're calling a micro leeches now or, yeah. or micro woolly buggers, whatever, micro buggers, do not use bead heads. No. Stay away from bead heads Somebody else and, told me that unless recently. you are fishing under an indicator. Yeah. Then you can use a bead head That's or right. you can actually tie them on a, on a jig style hook and yeah. they're deadly. They work great, yeah. That's right. especially if you have wave action. But a bead head, in my opinion, now you can use a clear bead or yeah, a black but you bead. You don't want weight. You don't want that weight at the no. end. I I have done. And why is that? Well, why do you not want weight? The, the fly's not natural. I think yeah. for the most part that, you know, it, it, this is open to conjecture, but woolly buggers imitate a myriad, you know, a plethora of different bugs. Yeah. But mostly, I think they imitate leeches. Yeah. They they imitate dragonflies, damselflies. Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the other yeah. thing. Maybe maybe in smaller sizes, shrimp or sure. scuds or stuff color. like that. You know, they're just yeah. a general imitation. Cool. But none of those bugs have that up and down undulating motion. None yeah. of them do. No. None of oh, them. Oh, that's do. right. And that's what does if it's got weight, it's doing None of them that. do. So you want to just be in You the want that, Babel. And, and in addition to that, yeah. I tie my woolly buggers with a one thin strip of wire in them, not wound wire on which side of the hook? one thin strip if on you want if you want the hook to ride yeah, with a hook up you tie them on the back that's it right. helps yeah. but if you want them to ride down you tie them on the bottom yeah, and that's right. and you know yeah. the, that's, you're that's laying, that's you're usually not on the bottom with your fly but if you're fishing the correct uh line yeah you know which is whether what? it's a, well, what's a, what's a good line? well if it's shallow water you can fish a floating line a long leader you yeah. know and a slightly weighted booger but yeah. if you're fishing say a, what we call a slime line a clear yeah. line yeah the sink rate is very similar. That bug is going to sink even if you're using a 10 foot, 12 foot, 15 foot leader with that little bit of weight in that bugger, it's going to sink at about the same rate as your intermediate sinking line is going to sink. Mm. And until you get into the, you know, the, uh, the real, you know, two, 300 grain lines, yeah. You know that so that's a, a whole soft. that's a whole other thing. So, but mostly you're yeah. fishing these clear lines, and what'll happen is the bug will have about the same sink rate. So you're a few feet under the As surface. You it, or, with an intermediate line, you can fish. You know, a foot and a half, two feet, yeah. say all the way up to eight, ten feet, yeah. depending on how long you want to wait for it to sink and your gotcha. retrieve rate. Yeah. But the the key I think is that bug will sit there at about the same level as the line will. Yeah. Um, so when you strip, it's not doing this. And you and can it's just coming no, it comes out. straight at it, yeah. it'll come straight at you. And 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 as leeches, particularly and damselflies too. Yeah. If you ever seen a damselfly, they'll just wiggle and then they'll stop and they just suspend. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, and that's what it will they do. They wiggle, right? And they stop and they suspend. And, and a lot of your takes are, are going to be right at the stop. No, okay, because they're yeah. they're chasing it, and then you just stop it right in front mm -hmm. of them. And the same thing with leeches. Leeches oh, wow. will retract. Hmm. They'll swim and shoot yeah. out like this. Then they'll retract back into a ball, right. especially if they see That's danger. Right. But they won't go down and sink. No. They'll just no. float. Nice. Effortless. So, the, yeah. you know, those are homespun so theories, but they're proven. Oh, that makes sense. And then, what, uh, and then what would be another fly? So you got the bugger. What would be another go-to lake? Um, and you, talk, you said the ants. Right? Yeah, or, yeah, but I, you know, if you're searching, you yeah. know, of course, parachute atoms. You really? Know? Parachute I mean, atoms on the lakes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, they're going to imitate a lot of different things, caddises. Yeah. You know, um, I tie my, my parachute atoms with a different wing. I don't use a white wing very often. Yeah. I do fish them yeah. for visibility reasons, but I actually tie them with grizzly, oh, hen, really? grizzly hen hackle. Oh, right. Yeah. And why is that? It just I just like that dark silhouette that yeah. they give. As opposed to um, their seeing. And they're they're difficult to tie because yeah. of the material. Oh, yeah. You can use a myriad of different tying yep. things for them. But that's a good searching fly. But there um there's a lot of good uh, as far as sunk flies go, I think yeah. the next one is a pheasant tail hmm. or a hare's ear. Okay. They're just searching patterns, yeah. they always seem to work. And if you, know. you fish those, could you trail those off of a woolly bugger? 
You could. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people okay. fished two, three, and four flies. Yeah. Now, you know, the midges, uh, that's become real popular. Thing, Marlon right. calls them Karana bobbers. Karana bobbers, yeah. I you know, know. that's uh, what, what so. the, the guy up in Canada who I talked to who's a big uh, bobber. Chan? Uh, yeah, Chan, yeah. Uh, and then his his counterpart. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, those guys love yeah. the, uh, well, and the whole hook thing is and totally different, too. And they, the jig hooks and yeah, all that. Hey, those guys got some really cool stuff yeah. going, and they're into it, and, yeah. and they're resourceful yeah. tires and fishermen, and yeah. they, they're highly respected members of the fly yeah. fishing community. Yeah. Phil Roy and, is the other guy. Right. Phil Roy and Chan. Um, personally, I don't like to watch a bobber. No. You know, uh, no. if you they're like going... Work, and that's exactly, mm -hmm. see, you're, that's exactly what Ricker said. He's like, yeah. you know, if you want to go watch a bobber, but I like to fish. He basically, yeah. he basically made the point that that's almost not even fishing. There are a <laughs> lot of people out there then. I met a guy this year on Crane Prairie Reservoir who, by the way, is from New Jersey. Yeah. And he's got a very direct personality, yeah. let's say. Yeah. And uh, he actually will give people a bunch of shit. What's the matter? Can't you cast? Right. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. That's not my cup of tea no, there. I mean, no. you know, whatever you want to do is fine with yeah, me. Yeah, but okay. I do. I agree with Danny on yeah. that on that level. Yeah. I want to cast and I want to fish. Yeah. You know. That's, um, it. That's it. And uh, don't get me wrong. There's been times in Montana recently I fished midges under a bobber. Yeah. And it was on, like on fish lake. after did, fish did after fish. Did you fish more lakes or streams in Montana? I fished both. Both. It was both. a mad rush, yeah. you know, everywhere. I fished... Uh, huh. I fished Endis Lake. That fishing was oh, yeah. extraordinary. No it kidding. Was, oh, those fish were so hot. Oh, wow. And big. Yeah. Some of them got very big. What would uh, you catch? Uh, what pattern was I was there? fishing almost all, um, some um, some facsimile of Calabatus hatches. Oh, yeah. Baby mm -hmm. Calabatus. There was yeah. uh, some Trico hatches mm -hmm. early in the morning and some, like, I'm not familiar with it, some pale done thing. Oh, yeah. But they were all, like, 20s to 26s yeah, 28s mean, fish were really tough to catch that way um, but every day there from about 10 o'clock on yeah. there were calabatus hatches of a done you know spinners mm. or a combination of of their of them so we were fishing i was fishing pheasant tails mostly yeah, on right. long leaders a um, i have some other imitations that i use they're kind of bastardizations oh. of pheasant tails that were working real well, but again, long, long, yeah, long. leaders. So fifteen. Well, what's the so I was going when ever the water was... was quiet. I was going seventeen. Yeah, and it made a difference. Yeah, that uh, extra two feet. Yeah, what's um, the um, so so you got flies? What about resources? If you think of, you know, are there any like books or anything? Mag you know, anything that you use that would be good for lakes that would help somebody if they didn't know much about lake fishing? Yeah, um, Randall Kaufman. Now again, yeah. I'm an old school sure. boy. Oh, yeah, old school okay, oh, and tons of good. I mean, Al McLean. I just had somebody the other day asking that question. Yeah. He said, Al McLean yeah. <laughs> is a great resource. He said uh -huh. that encyclopedia is unbelievable. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to speak about this for a minute in regards to Randall Kaufman's yeah. book, Fish in Lakes. So, oh, yeah. Best book I've ever read. No kidding. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's it's extraordinary, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Now, there's probably other books out there that, you know, um, are, are right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's one I read, and mm -hmm. I highly respect Randall and that Perfect. book. Um, there's another book in regards to fishing in general, and this yeah. is really old school, but it's Ray Bergman's oh, Trout. Yeah. It Trout, exactly, yeah. And that, that book will teach yep. you a lot of things that all these videos and YouTubers will have not even thought no. about That's in cool. regards to sunshine, shadow, approach, mm -hmm. how to catch the fish nearest you, play the fish nearest you. There's yeah. a, a, an, a, an amazing amount of information. Some of it's just, you know, past its time. So Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's but not, no, Bergman's, I mean, he's a huge, that's it's, a huge It's a Bible. Yeah. When I was in, that's getting back cool. to when I was a kid, I yeah. read that book five times. There you go. Yeah. Cover to cover. Brings it back. Yeah. So now when you think, so you you fished a tons of places. I mean, is there any place out there that you haven't been to that you'd love to still go to and fish? Yeah, I like to go to BC. In, yeah. in terms of freshwater, I'd yeah. like to go to BC. Your dad always talked about yeah. BC lakes and yeah. Oh, right, just the camels yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I'd like to go fish the yeah. lakes in BC, and I have yet to land a big tarpon. I've, I've oh. jumped, I've jumped seven tarpon. So you've been tarpon fishing? I have, yeah. Okay. And my biggest one, according to a guide there, um, John Oaks was his name. Yeah. He said 
somewhere between 170 and 190. So you're not talking baby tarp, but you're talking big. No, no, these where, where were big this, boys. Where was this at? It was in uh, Punta Gorda, oh, so Florida. Then, yeah. Then, oh, Florida, yeah. Yeah, yeah in yeah, Florida, right. yeah. Yeah, we had a... Uh, I'd like to go back to Florida. Yeah. Unfortunately, fishing's not what it used to be yeah. there in that area for various reasons. Gotcha. But yeah, Bruce, uh, that, Bruce Chart is mm-hmm. a big uh, giant tarpon mm-hmm. guy there. I've heard about it. I don't know a lot, but yeah. I've heard all the hotshot guides, yeah. you know, Greg Moon down in Louisiana mm-hmm. and John Oaks and several other Florida guides yeah. talk about the Seychelles. Oh, yeah. Seychelles. Expensive trip, a long It's a long on my bucket flight, list. It's on my bucket list. I would love on, to yeah, go to the I'm Seychelles. I'm planning on getting there for sure. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. There's a, again, like, like I said, I've interviewed so many people now. These stories have come up, but there's... um. There's one guy who just keeps on Instagram. He keeps posting these crazies fished everywhere, mm-hmm. and it's it's yeah pretty unbelievable. It's supposed so, to be something else. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah cool. Yeah. Anything? Well, yeah. Anything? Uh, anything we left out? I mean, we could probably you know we you know funny yeah. thing is on the river we've <laughs> sat here and talked and told stories many times, mm-hmm. and it, I I just wanted to get together like this just to you know like I said get something on the books because you know you've been a big influence for me over the years and I wanted to Thank you. let people that you know follow me kind of hear from a person mm-hmm. you know who was a big influence for me so yeah this has been fun and I guess you know next thing we just need to get a trip together it's been a little while since we've been It's been too long. Yeah. It has been, so you know. Uh, I understand you're busy with your family oh, yeah. and those things but No, we should we should try um, to we should try to maybe you know the next uh next year or whatever find something mm-hmm. something we can get out and well hopefully god willing and everything i'm going to be out there i'm going yeah. back to montana next year yep we were sure. there for almost a month and i didn't want to come no. home no i know god. Montana's great. we blew up uh just one little added thing and yeah. this is this is something that most people don't know about but yeah on the suggestion of a really young hotshot guide in ennis and i don't remember his name uh i found out that you can catch giant rainbows and browns in the middle of lakes and gra- on grasshopper patterns no, in, the in the middle of the day. Of lakes. Mm-hmm. That's weird. And that's a new thing for me. I've always caught them along shorelines, yeah. but I so had what, a, they're just something just floating get blown gets blown. I up had there. fish blowing up yeah. on big grasshoppers in the middle of of uh, Georgetown Lake near Phillipsburg, Montana. Wow. Fish up to 28 inches. <laughs> And again, it was like sharks eating penguins. They were leaving spray trails of like three feet. Really? Yeah, it was awesome. So when you go out there, guys, don't forget about the grasshoppers yeah. at that right. Yeah, who's it? This is uh, this is Mac, right? This is Mac. He's so a, my you, you yellow bird dog. So you've had so you got Mac before Mac was who? Deschutes. Deschutes. So before yeah. Deschutes, his name is actually McKenzie. Mr. Little. Yeah, was but it Mr. yeah, Little? yeah. Before, right? before, <laughs> yeah. So now you got Mac. And Max a good dog, and we just had our dog who was 15 canoe. We had to put down recently. Yeah, Aww. it was tough. It was tough. We, uh, oh man, we all it was. We had the 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 vet came over to our house. You know, had the kids there. We were all there with the dog. It was really tough. But it's an interesting thing with animals because not like a week later, this cat shows up out of nowhere, and it turns out it looks just like our dog. Oh, that's spooky. Yeah, yeah. I know. I was like, well, okay, so now we have a cat. Ooh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so we got a cat. <laughs> But, uh, all right, Gene. Well, hey, just wanted to thank you for uh, you know. It's been great. Taking, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been wonderful. It's been too long. Yeah, we've got a lot of other stories to to share. Well, we will. Maybe, maybe we'll do this as a uh, some of them not suitable for public exactly uh, yeah, listening well, or viewing. That's right. This is a family show. I uh, yeah. I definitely keep it clean. So mm-hmm. yeah, maybe we'll get uh, maybe do this again in a year or two and check in with. I you hope so. See, I see hope so. On. God willing, yeah, we'll be out there. Right. Maybe you can make it to Montana with me next year. Yeah, or uh, or bird hunting. I do have plans for bird hunting because I still have my shotgun, mm-hmm. even though I I think I gave away my decoys when I. I thought you were going to say you gave away your plug. Uh, no, 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 exactly. No, I still have my shotgun, and I do need to find a uh, gun for my uh, for my kid. Mm-hmm. See if I can get her something a starter gun, which is probably like a. I guess what would it be? Get a twenty gauge yeah, auto. Yeah, twenty gauge auto. Yeah, yeah something mm-hmm. like that. And then for gas a rifle, operated, probably, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> No, I mean, 243, which is a little bit older. What do, what do you get a kid that's only in the 90s? Mm, yeah, 2506 or something. Yeah, I don't or know. Even 22 yeah, or something 22. Even, yeah. yeah. Something so, small. I mean, you're not going to shoot much with it, but no. it'd be fun to, to go out and plink yeah. around with. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I'll okay. wrap this up and uh, we'll press uh, stop here. It's been a pleasure. All right. So there you go. If you want to find all the show notes, all the links we covered, just go to wetflyswing.com slash 163. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash trips and find out where we are heading uh, next this year. 
I want to thank you again for stopping by today to check out the show. I'm looking forward to catching up soon. I hope to maybe see you on the river or online. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com. And if you found this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. 